Now, you were a vegan for a while, right? Yeah. How long were you a vegan for? Pretty well, a couple of years. For a couple of years? Yeah, five years. When did it stop? Years. When did you stop doing that? Hey, Joe, this is your new agent. Uh, my name is <laughs> Vegans. Um, elk deserve no rights. So, yeah, that's my name. Um, so I have my list here of all the potential guests we have for next week. We have a plant-based medical doctor who wants to come on and defend the, uh, you know, the health benefits of a vegan diet. We have, oh, we have three vegan activists, actually, by the name of, hmm, let me see here, uh, James Aspie, Earthling Ed, and Joey Carbstrong. So what do you think about that so far? Oh, and I see here we also have Miley Cyrus and Mike Tyson. So yeah, who do you, who do you think we should have on, given everyone I just kind of named there? Hmm, I, uh, do, uh... Oh, I'm actually seeing here that Miley Cyrus and, uh, Mike Tyson are actually ex-vegans, and I think... Oh my gosh, are you serious? Miley Cyrus and Mike Tyson are no longer vegan. Ugh, we need them on ASAP, please. Everyone else who said, I don't give a f about them, please. We need those ex-vegans on ASAP. We need to make the vegan diet look as awful as possible so I can feel justified in my killing of elk and my loving of meat. Please, please, please. I don't care about Earthling Ed or James Aspie or, or you know, a dietitian or a doctor that wants to defend the plant-based diet. Please, no, get those ex-vegans on ASAP. You know what, actually, let's get them on back-to-back. -back. vegans. I just need to confirm my bias, please. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy that we have this opportunity. Get them on ASAP. Dude, I'm about to have an orgasm. Yes! Hey, what is up, guys? So if you haven't heard, we have another ex-vegan, and this time it is Mike Tyson, and he actually came out in the same fashion that Miley Cyrus came out as ex-vegan, and that is on the Joe Rogan podcast. Now, is it a coincidence that, you know, Joe Rogan had two ex-vegans back-to-back -back on his podcast? Who really knows, but honestly, I think given his past history of being an anti-vegan, it probably was planned, but, you know, we don't really know. It's hard to prove these things. Now, when I say that Mike Tyson was an ex-vegan, that does imply that he identified as an ethical vegan in the past. I'm not really sure if that's the case. He could have just been a plant-based person. I read in, like, a plant-based news article that he said something like, oh, I don't eat anything with a mother. So that implied to me some sort of, like, ethical basis for his decision to, you know, consume, like, a vegan or plant-based diet or whatever. Either way, if he's an ex-vegan or an ex-plant-based person, it doesn't really matter. There was a lot of cringy things said in the actual podcast regardless so yeah and one more thing before we get on with this video i have a big announcement for the end of this video so please stay tuned for that yeah. you were a vegan for a while right yeah. how long were you a vegan for pretty well a couple of years for a couple of years yeah five years when did it stop when did you stop doing that i don't know not too long ago so did you stop because too. of the training or did you stop before that yeah i did stop Reason because of the training, it was yeah. because of what I wanted my body to look like and the strength that I wanted to possess. All right, so at the beginning of the point in the podcast where Mike Tyson starts talking about how he's no longer vegan, he starts saying that the reason he stopped being vegan or plant based, whatever, I'm going to be using those words interchangeably in this video. So the reason he stopped is partially because of this upcoming fight he has and the fact that he thinks that the vegan diet or plant based diet cannot get him into the physique or shape that he wants and also can't get him to the strength that he wants. And of course, while Mike Tyson is saying this, Joe in his head is just kind of like going crazy, like, yes, yes, please keep going. Please keep on the vegan diet. Like, yes, I love this. So the implication here and what Mike Tyson is saying is that there is something about a plant-based diet or vegan diet that is lacking, which would prevent him from getting to the ideal physique and strength that he wants. So we all know, and the data shows, that when it comes to a plant-based diet, if you want to build muscle and build strength at the same rate as somebody who's consuming a non-vegan diet, all you need to do is consume the same amount of calories and also have the same amount of protein. There's nothing magical about animal products that would get Mike Tyson to his ideal physique or strength that is not present in a plant-based diet. And it's also insane to me how Mike Tyson is sitting there saying, yeah, Joe, I mean, I just don't think that the plant-based diet is adequate for muscle and strength. And Joe Rogan himself literally had James Wilkes, the creator of the Game Changers, the creator of the documentary that was meant to show people that you can gain muscle and strength adequately on a vegan or plant-based diet. He had James come on and defend with data and science against Chris Kresser the benefits of the plant-based diet and how the plant-based diet can, you know, yield optimal muscle and strength. And Joe Rogan is just sitting there hearing Mike Tyson say like, yeah, you know, I don't think this is the case that you can build muscle and strength on a vegan diet adequately. And he's just sitting there like, yeah, like kind of just like taking it in. As opposed to just saying like, hey man, have you like heard that I had a three hour debate on my own platform where I even acknowledge at the end that I do believe that the plant-based diet is adequate for muscle and strength? Like, uh, it's just weird. Like, I don't know. This is another example of Joe Rogan's anti-vegan bias coming out. I know all of your critiques because I've noted them and I've got a point for each one. But since you brought up cattle, you said that cattle, uh, there's no evidence of cattle being fed B12. So if you bring up flight 46... Vitamin B12 for sheep and cattle, that's what it says. Young ruminants require supplemental vitamin B12 prior to full rumen development. 
They also say vitamin T is sometimes administered uh, parenterally to yeah. uh, incoming feedlot cattle. You said there was no evidence that cattle are given B12. And you said that all my statements were absolutely false. Do you at least admit that you were wrong there? Okay, you said, first of all, when I made the full statement, this is what you first said. That's just all false. That's all just factually wrong. And then later on, you said, there's also zero evidence that B12 is fed to cattle. That is flat out wrong. And I have just shown that. Is that yeah, fair? I was wrong. About okay, that. so we'll get to other points because you were wrong about many other things as well. All of the statements that I made in the film were true. And you said that they were patently false and you were wrong. I didn't. Joe. Come on. I know, like, now well, listen, I've I'm, come in here. Yeah, I've right? said I've, it already. Yeah. yeah. No, so I, I just want to make you're, sure. You're correct. Right. Because I've come in here and people are saying, oh, what are you going to say to that debunk? Chris did not debunk the film. He made misrepresentations of our claims and he got things factually wrong. How, how am I doing, by the way, defending the film? Excellent. First of all, B12 is an argument. Smash that. Protein is the next argument. I've just smashed the protein qu quantity argument and now we'll get into the quality. Okay. So what you're saying is that as long as you're getting this 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram yeah. of protein, whether yeah. it's lentils or peanut butter, <coughs> or yeah. so, that you have enough amino acids to achieve the desired results. Yeah. And it's essentially the exact same as if you're hitting that 2.2 grams. If you're getting 2.2 grams, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Chris, this has not been that good for your arguments. But how? I mean, you've got to have some like logical arguments, Chris. I'm sorry, but you're like, I have disproven your rebuttal on protein and on B12. Do you think so I presented if, a good But if it's about amino acids <clears throat> and it's about protein content and digestibility, if what he's saying is correct, then there really is no need to eat meat. Then there really is no need to eat meat. Then there really is no need to eat meat. Yeah, Joe, so really I just think that I need to stop being vegan because I'm not sure if the vegan diet can give me all the strength and, you know, the physique that I really want. You know, Mike, it's actually funny because I actually had on my own podcast the creator of The Game Changers, a documentary that was based on, you know, showing that you can build muscle and strength on a plant-based diet. I had him come on my channel and my podcast and debate Chris Kresser and destroy him in a debate. Destroy him in a debate that was based on, you know, plant-based nutrition and muscle and strength. And I even acknowledged at the end of the debate, like, yo, you know what? Actually, I think you're right. You could build muscle and strength on a vegan diet. And I'm not going to share that with you now, even though you're right here telling me that you're not sure if you can build muscle and strength on a vegan diet. And the reason I'm not going to share that with you is because I just, you know, really, it doesn't suit my bias. I'd rather, you know, just pretend like there wasn't like a three hour debate on my actual platform and podcast where it was literally proven to me right in front of me with evidence that a plant based diet is adequate for muscle and strength. So I'm not going to let you know about what that evidence is. I'm not going to even like kind of entertain the fact that you might be wrong with your intuitions about how the plant based diet isn't good for muscle and strength. And instead, I'm just going to, you know, kind of agree with you and be like, yo, you know what? You're so right. And the other reason why I'm not going to provide that data to you is because, I mean, I don't want to support plant genocide. Plants feel pain, and I would feel like such a terrible person if I provoked you to go support the plant holocaust. So you started eating meat, red meat, everything no, no, again? No, no, no red yeah, meat. But only um, elk and bison. Oh, red um, meat. That's duck. red meat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wild stuff. You eating elk and bite too? I want to give you some of my elk. Yeah. See, really? Would you please? Fuck would yeah. Would you please, man? hundred percent. Did you kill it? Yes. Yeah, I would like yes. for you to do that. I'll give you some from that elk right there. Yo, that would be so awesome. Fuck yeah. That would be so awesome, I, I have bro, three bro. commercial freezers in the back. Yeah. I would love that. I would oh, love man. that. Yeah, Joe, so I'm actually eating elk now, and I just think- Oh my God, dude, you're eating elk now? Dude, I actually murder elk myself. I have like innocent elk murder victims in my commercial freezer right now. Actually, like, after the podcast, we can go and eat them. We can go munch on their corpses. Dude, I'm so excited that you're eating elk. I love killing elk. They're just, they're amazing. And like, you know, I just think elk is so healthy for you. I have no actual data to support this, but dude, elk, like hell yeah, bro. Elk, I love killing elk. Dude, we're gonna be eating all the elk in the world. Dude, elk. Me you know, too. I, I realize that there's, you know, things that are good for other people, like the, the kale and the vegetables and all this stuff, the blueberry. And then for me, it's really poisonous. It's not good. That stuff's bad for you? But yeah, that stuff's not good for my blood type and my health conditions and all that stuff. Kale? All that oh, stuff's kale bad for you? Kill me. Kale, really? why? Yeah, it's going to kill me. <laughs> kale will kill me. <laughs> what no, actually dead. <clears throat> really? Yeah, for me, um, kale is toxic to my blood and everything. All right, so here is Mike saying that he believes that some foods are good for others while others are not good for other people. And I agree with this. This is not a very controversial thing to say. So there's this crazy thing called food allergies where... One person can be allergic to one food while another person isn't allergic to that one food. So yeah, I agree. There are some foods 
that are bad for certain people. This is not very scientifically controversial. Now, I actually met a girl a week ago who was an ex-vegan who told me that she used to eat a lot of kale when she was vegan, and then she found out later in time that she was actually allergic to kale, and that every time she consumed kale, she was burning the lining of her stomach. And she's smart enough to realize that she can go back to being vegan, she just has to not eat kale because kale is not the only vegan food. So if something was happening to Mike Tyson's body when he ate blueberries and kale, fair enough, just don't eat blueberries and kale. Blueberries and kale are not the only two vegan foods out there. There are thousands of edible plants. So he could just have a plant-based diet or a vegan diet without blueberries and kale. Mind blown. Oh, okay, Mike Tyson. So I'm seeing here that you are allergic to kale and blueberries. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're telling me I can't be vegan, right? Because I mean, the only two vegan foods there are blueberries and kale, right? So I, I mean, I can't be a vegan. Uh, yeah, that's correct, man. I'm seeing here that the only really food you can eat now is elk. There's no other, there's no other plant foods. So yeah, I guess you can only really eat elk now. And it's interesting because I've done it when I was with Cuss. I, I will sometimes just overdo it sometimes. Like sometimes I go for religious fast for 30 days. I might overdo it. Sometimes I might not eat for the whole day. Mm -hmm. Instead of just for the daytime, not right. eating and eating. And I might for a couple of days just not eat, period. Don't you think, that, but that's just your championship mentality, right? Like you're always pushing yourself, even when it comes to something like fasting. All right, guys, so I'm sure Mike was exaggerating when he said he was eating nothing on a plant-based diet, but honestly, he might not even be to a certain extent. He said that he had these 30-day fasts. He would do several-day fasts at a time. So this seems like something like Tim Sheaf, you know, like an ex-vegan who ends up eating a nutrient-deprived version of a vegan diet, experiencing negative symptoms or not feeling good or not getting optimal strength and performance and physique or whatever, and then blaming the vegan diet instead of the actual nutrient restriction of their diet, for example, a 30 day fast or a five day fast or however long his fasts were when they were not 30 days long. So after Mike Tyson tells Joe Rogan, like, yeah, I was basically eating nothing. Joe doesn't say like, hey man, you know, maybe the, you know, maybe the reason you weren't getting your optimal strength and all that was because you were eating nothing. Like he doesn't say that. Instead he's like, dude, you're a champion, dude. Like that's, dude, you've always been like that. You know, like that's like the mindset of a champion, like just starving yourself for 30 days. Like that is, dude, like, hell yeah, man. Yo, so Mike Tyson, tell me, I know you weren't feeling too good on the vegan diet, but like, what were you actually eating? Oh man, honestly, on the vegan diet, I was eating close to nothing. Like for 30 days at a time, I would just eat nothing. Or like sometimes I'd even for several days, just go several days without eating anything. So yeah, that's actually what I was eating on a vegan diet, basically nothing. So Joe, do you think that maybe like the fact that I was eating nothing on a vegan diet or close to nothing on a vegan diet that like maybe that was why I didn't succeed on a vegan diet? Like Joe, I know you're a nutritional scientist and I know you know a lot about nutrition. So I'm just wondering, do you think that the reason I failed on a vegan diet was because I ate close to nothing on a vegan diet? Like, what do you think, Joe? Dude, probably not. I mean, like, that's honestly just some champion right there. Like, the fact that you starved yourself for 30 days, like, dude, you're a champion. Like, I'm not going to actually sit here and, like, mention that maybe the reason the vegan diet wasn't working for you is because you weren't eating for 30 days at a time. Like, that's probably not why, but, dude, like, you're such a champion. Like, good stuff, bro, for just, you know, like, starving yourself for 30 days on a vegan diet. Like, you really did veganism correctly. Like, dude, hell yeah. All right, guys, so I want to address something real quick. I've been making a lot of ex-vegan videos lately because of all the recent ex-vegans that have been coming out. And a lot of the times the carnists and the carnivores and the keto people that sub to me for troll reasons end up commenting very sarcastically like, Oh, like, they must have been doing it wrong, right? As if that just isn't a possibility. As if there isn't a way for somebody to consume a nutrient-deprived version of a vegan diet. Like, I'm sarcastic all the time and confidently because the things I'm sarcastic about are you know things that I've verified factually and I, I know that it makes sense for me to make a joke out of something so absolutely stupid but these people are being sarcastic and saying they must have done it wrong as if that's not like a possibility like this also applies to a non-vegan diet like I am very objective and I acknowledge that on a non-vegan diet somebody can yield positive health outcomes they can have great blood work where they're showing high levels of everything they need when I was a non-vegan and I got blood work done my blood work was perfect it's obviously possible so if a person is consuming an omnivorous diet or a non-vegan diet listen closely guys this is very complex for you little carnists if someone does that and they have low levels of important nutrients you can say they did a non-vegan diet incorrectly in reference to optimizing certain blood markers and not being deficient in nutrients. So it's possible to do a vegan diet incorrectly and have negative blood test results. And also it's possible to do a non-vegan diet incorrectly and have negative blood test results. What a crazy concept. Now, let me say this extremely slowly 
for the anti-vegans sub to my channel. If a non-vegan gains a deficiency on a non-vegan diet, then they did a non-vegan diet incorrectly. And this also applies to somebody getting a deficiency on a vegan diet. Anti-vegans listening, if you need me to break it down even further, just let me know in the comments and I will spell each word out individually. So here is this special announcement I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I would make at the end of the video. So if you guys enjoyed this video, well, the good news is three days from now, I have a massive collab coming out with Slightly Crazy Vegan, a YouTuber, which by the way, you should totally sub to. And we're going to be going over the traits that most ex-vegans have in common and how we can use the recognition of these traits to detect or at the very least expect future ex-vegans to become ex-vegan so that we are not so shocked when they do and end up announcing that they're no longer vegan. This video is very in-depth and I think that its release is perfect timing given the four most recent ex-vegans of 2020, Maddie Limburner, Miley Cyrus, John Penis, and Mike Tyson, and you know, whatever we can say, Mike Tyson was ex-plant based, whatever, who really cares? So if you're interested in seeing that video and I'm not subscribed yet, please subscribe and tap that bell button so you can see and be notified when the video comes out. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Are there any you know potential vegans you think are gonna become ex-vegan soon or plant-based people, whatever, let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas of people you want me to cover, also let me know below. If you support my content and want to support me on Patreon, the link is in my description below. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.